Hey, hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Lord of the Rings Online. We are here once again with the wagon containing Isildur's bones. We have Vagary the Wanderer and Gandalf alongside us. And uh, yeah, last episode we got to level 127, which is very good. Uh, we also have done another epic battle in the meantime, so we should hopefully have a new bit of gear. Um, hopefully... Well, anything's an upgrade, because even that ring we got last time is now technically one level out. But, yeah, I have that. Uh, this is the ring we swapped for last time, so that's 118 to 126. We should open these two and just get uh, Starlet... Um, Starlet... Star Merits? Stars of Merit. There we are. I was thinking Starlet Crystals, but, yeah. Um, so we should just get those. Last time we got 15, this time we're only getting 10. Still fine. But then this, hopefully, Gift of Rohan should give us a new bit of gear. So let's have a look at that. We are going to get, is that a pocket item? I think it is. Yep. Uh, didn't look at the stats. But, uh, see, this is the interesting thing with the pocket item. We do have a level 125 one that has more agility, less vitality, and we also get a max morale boost. So, really, that's probably the worst thing we could have got because... No fate increase, which probably would have been the thing that sold it for me. Um, less agility, which means less damage. And by quite a significant margin, that's about 800 uh, agility gone. And we only would gain a little bit of vitality. Admittedly, yes, we'd gain, like, just putting this on, we're going to go to 98k. Well, we can't even see because we've currently got a load of dread. I wonder if we go a bit south, it, w it will show what our actual morale would be. Let's just go south until we get no dread, and in the meantime, do our Hobbit gift of the day and the week, which is going to be 50 Venture Experience and a Max Morale on Power, and 50 Venture Experience and two Greater Potions of Power. Good. So 121,004, and then that'll be 122,975. So that's about 2k, basically, uh, which is... See, it's not even that much, and I don't think it's worth the loss in agility, so uh, that unfortunately looks like a bit of a dud, sadly, um, which is a little bit upsetting. But uh, we do have a broken helmet, or a nearly broken helmet, because of the epic battle. Same with the ring, which I was sort of hoping would be the thing that gets uh, swapped out today. So uh, we need to repair those as soon as possible, but I am pretty sure, I didn't actually look it up in the end, but I'm pretty sure this epilogue is just going to be instances after instance. So nonetheless, Let's get started. Um, yeah, he just went and talked to the raiding party and getting ready to attack Isildur and nab the ring off him and take it to Mordor, uh, obviously to get his uh, his wife and, or well, secret wife and son um, to be let go of the curse and himself die as well, I guess was his plan. Um, so let's see how that went. We kind of know how it went, but let's see the intricate details. The second attack was more fierce than the first had been. The Sindhu's defeat seems certain. Okay, so we've got Tarendil over here, who's probably just like... Yeah, you can kind of see he's not attacking. Like, the others are all attacking and he's not. So I wonder if Isilda knew of his betrayal. I became separated from Isilda during the fighting while I was engaged with the Orcs on one flank of our diminishing circle, he gave something to his esquire, Otar. Otar vanished during the fight. Did he escape? And more importantly, what was he given? What was he given? Could be the ring. Could be something else. Had Otar taken the ring? I had to know. Uh, Tell do we have to keep fighting. We are getting, gonna get through this. Did you, what did father give to Otar? It's not a time for this, but rather keep fighting. Yeah, because obviously he's very much um, a traitor. <laughs> Tarendil, protect father. Maldoran, there are too many. Uh, okay, things got ill for us, brother. Father sent his esquire wearing, uh, away before the fighting became too thick, entrusting Otar to bear the shards of Narsil away from battle. But if we do not give him the object that the orcs desire, if we do not do something, they will see. So he gave him the blade, not... Um, not the ring. Oh. So, got to run after him. During the confusion, I had lost sight of Isilda. Where he gone, and did he start the ring? If he escaped now, my bargain with the Nazgul would become for naught. The riverbank must have escaped to the riverbank. 
Well, there's also the fact he's got the ring, so he technically could go invisible. Ah, oh, so much quieter. <laughs> we also know that he... Didn't he die over on this hill here, and that's why his shade was there? Is that a thing? Oh, he's just gonna... He's just gonna disappear as soon as I get there. That thing? Yep, pretty much. And... Yep, <laughs> there we are. There are probably just a bunch of them under the ground. So, this is his armor, but not his body. Interesting. The discarded armor lies by the riverbank. So he, he got rid of his armor. His armor lay among the reeds discarded. He must have intended to swim. Fair enough. You don't want to be weighed down by that. It, it sealed a swam, and I pursued him. I mean, we have light armor on. Or medium armor, so it's not really technically slowing us down, but looks like over here is Parandel or Silda, yeah. So Silda must know that something's up. Like, it looks very much like Phantom at last can make no sense for his expression, make pain and elation. It looks like, yeah, he's like laid back and Tarendal's ready to kill him, basically. I guess he's just injured. Fair enough. My muscles ache to swim and take its toll on me. I knew I must rest before returning, uh, attempting a return journey. I would hide among the reeds and wait until the orcs prowling on the distant shore had abandoned their vigil. Then I would swim back with my prize. Despite my exhaustion, I had to complete the task I had set for myself. It was time. As, I tra uh, as tried, tired as well as a sick and heart and body as a man could be, I had to finish this. We do know that the ring can sort of think for itself, can disappear, or not disappear, but change its size. Why is this? There's some very good shots. Why did it- was it because of the ring his head suddenly started to glow? <laughs> or what? Not really, no. You're gone with the current. And the ring with you. All is lost, all is ashes, a thousand curses upon you. Without the ring, I cannot fulfill my bond, I cannot save my family. Braventel, hail. I tried, I tried, I tried. Ugh. And took his life. I glanced away for a second, and suddenly he was dead. Uh, but for men of such as me, death was no escape. Yeah, it looks like he did. Talk to the shade. My dagger cut deeply, and I perished. But all the line of my family had reached its end. I was have no rest. The other I swore was to power far greater and uh, greater and darker than sworn by Riok, and it bound me to those cursed fields long past the night my blood spilt. I searched in vain for Sauron's ring, but my prize was lost, and with it all my hopes. I yielded in my misery, and rage consumed me. So great was my ire that fled before me. Uh, and when centuries passed, I left behind a memory, uh, behind all memory of my life, and I knew it was all I knew was anger and resentment. And I gave the death that was denied me to all those who entered my dominion, orc, elf, and all man. No creature was safe from my wrath. But then, amid the confusion. Confused tatters of my memory, one crossed my path who I knew of old. He swore, wore the appearance of an old pilgrim, cloaked in grey, but I knew his vagabond form hid a great power. 
How could he have returned? I confronted him. My spirit was seared by the heat of the power he kept hidden. Then I was afraid and fled, but he followed close behind and cast a spell most cruel. I was banished, but the force of my oath prevented my leaving. In distress, my very being was torn asunder, and I knew no more for long years. So, but something changed, something far away and yet ever present, and my form coalesced in agony out of the mist. The pain I felt in that moment was worse than every torment. I have ever experienced, save one, the anguish of losing Braventel and heal forevermore, the pain I still feel, and it will never abate. So yeah, Gandalf, I assume that's Gandalf the Grey, um, he did mention that he previously met this sort of, you know, uh, spirit, power, it was familiar to him sort of thing. So that's probably what that is, and then I'm guessing the, um, something changed, something far away and yet ever present is probably the ring being destroyed. That might have been it. His sort of Sauron's hold on him, possibly. I desired to confess my treachery and I have done so. Okay, so, oh, this is interesting. We get some wall decorations and if we can get halls of memory stuff, that would look really cool in a house, I think. And I would definitely, I still need to purchase one just for myself because of the amount of junk I have in my inventory that I'm uh, far too... Um, much of a hoarder to get rid of, basically. Um, mostly cosmetics, I think. But, um, yeah, it would be really interesting for us to get a house. We have a lot of these, like, fire pits and these decorations that we could then put up. Saves more inventory space. And uh, having the Halls of Memory stuff, um, I think, would look quite cool, assuming it's what I think it is. I'm just thinking of that, um, I think it was two episodes ago for the thumbnail. I had this that really big, like, gate with, like, a swirling uh, purple look. I thought that looked really cool. Um, but... I guess we'll have to see. Um, but from what I, I did quickly look, and uh, this should be our last instance, and then the next one after that is the end of this epilogue. I just thought I'd have a quick look while I was in the middle of loading. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I decided to confess my treachery, and I have done so. There remains but one thing for me. I will seek for my wife and child, for Braventel and Heal, no matter where they may be, I could suffer any hurt, or would suffer any hurt, to see them again, and to know their fate, whether it be doom and undeterred, or rest finally achieved. Do they linger still in this world? I have to know. If I must consign myself to mindless oblivion in the effort, so be it. I will face it without fear. Tarendil's form wavers uncertainly, and he addresses Isilda for the last time. Father, I do not seek your pardon. I know it would never be granted, and I would not ask it. But I wanted you to know how sorry I am. I have forgotten so much over the centuries, but I, but that I never lost. That sorrow that's always with me, even when all else was empty. Technically, you didn't actually kill him. You set up the situation for him to be killed, but technically you weren't his killer. So, there is that. Talk to the side of a shield, uh, it's, it's Silda. There we are. I do not forgive you, Tarantino. My son, not of blood, but of choice. I think there was a time where these sorrows might have become avoided had you spoken freely to me in life. I have set aside my vengeance, there is no suffering I could impose that you have not inflicted upon yourself. Go then and endure the punishment you have earned, the punishment you created. Be gone. The shade of Taradil fades from view. Shade of Tarendil bows his head and fades from view. There we are. And Gandalf. Hearing the tale of Tarendil in its fullness fills me with both satisfaction and regret. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's what he said. The first of the responses is... First for the responses it, in it to questions long unanswered, but second for my own part in the tale. The evil deeds he performed cannot be excused, but if I had known the full extent of the show's story, I might have stayed my hand. Farewell to Tarendil, to Braventil, and Hale. Whatever their fates, our journey must continue. One oath may yet be fulfilled. We must continue on to Rivendell. So apparently there's an instance coming. Um, meet up with Gandalf in the wagon bearing the bones at the entrance to the Valley of Rivendell. Now we are obviously Hunter, so that's good. Um, but technically, if you were to do this without swift traveling, you go through Moria, to Eriador, to Rivendell. Now, do we have to go... Okay, we do have to go to the Gates of Imladris. So... Uh, at least we have the travel skill. That's good. Even if we didn't, we're an elf. We could have used our trait skill as well, which would have been good. Right. Let us get on our war steed. Luckily, we're relatively close uh, being brought there. If it was, like, over here, which I thought it may have been, or, I know, down a little bit further by the giant valley, or even here, because that would go through a region, I would have been a bit worried. But, yeah. There should be this, and then a sort of finishing epilogue quest. And then we'll probably end off for the day and then start whatever's next after that. I haven't looked yet, but um, obviously something has to come from that. At the very least, update 28 is now out. 
So there's that, but I'm pretty sure I've still got a bunch of stuff between now and then uh, to go through. So, slowly but surely, we're getting there. And we can also repair our stuff while we're here as well. And uh, then also, it gives me a chance in between episodes now, we're not sort of in the middle of uh, the Gladden Fields, we can uh, possibly go and have a look at houses because we've now unlocked that. Is it this quest? No, this quest. We will have unlocked the Walls of Memory stuff and I think it might look quite nice. And at the very least, I can get more stuff for my... Uh, more inventory space basically because I'm a bit of a hoarder and it's a bit of a problem. The wagon bearing the bones of Isilda have come a long way from Gondor and so have you. Took me only a minute though. After the passage of so many years I have come at last to Rivendell as was my vow. I can now no rest these long centuries later. Never did I think this day would come. The seed of Isilda waved us before you, simmering in and out of view. With great effort, he remains to give you his final words. The tale of Tarendal has stirred something in me, and I can dismiss it no longer. I know the struggle he faced, the conflict that caused him such distress, and I, can f I find I can understand. I do not forgive him, but I understand what caused him to fall. He was my son, not of blood, but a son all the same. Uh, some measures of his wickedness must, must be traced to me, for I was not the man... He would, was I not the man he would strive to be? I mean, technically, it's, it's more of a case of, like, your sons of blood, you don't get to choose them, but you did choose him as your son. So, I mean, there's, like, a little bit of something there. I don't know. The Shred of Isilda waves as again, his attachment to Middle-earth made tenuous by fulfillment of his ancient vow. My thoughts turn to Aeona. Uh, Tar Tarendil fell to darkness through the arts of the Blade of Lebanon, one of the Nazgul, and not the greatest nor the most evil, but Aena fell to the lord of the Nazgul himself. Aena spoke of the torments he endured in that dark place, and I dismissed them. The blood of my brother, Anarion, runs through, or ran through his veins, and I chast, um, chastened, chastened? Yeah. Him for not res resisting. I cursed him for failure. I, who might have ended the region, the reign of Sauron forever, and could not. I regret my words. Aena should not have been left with him in his Morgul. Did I say he died as Gothmog? Nay, he died as Aena, descended through many generations from my brother Anarion, who perished on the fields before Barad-dur. It is my hope that the body of Aena will be recovered and given a king's rest. This is my final request. Farewell. So he's going to fade from our view. His vow fulfilled, the Shade of Isildur knows. Uh, at last knows peace. The ring came to Rivendell long years after he so vowed. Now both are gone from the world. It's been an eventful journey, but there is one thing I must ask you, or must say to you. His eyes twinkle merrily and I lift the Black Book of Mordor from its level, leather strap. I spent the latter half of the ride to Rivendell considering that I may have missed within... What I may have missed within the Black Book. The glass shard from the beacon of Barad Curran revealed no further secrets to me, but I felt certain there was more to learn. Had I overlooked some trick? At last I determined my error, and while I am ashamed to admit it, even the very wise will sometimes make mistake of this fashion. I was so focused upon the writings of Vowen that all else was obscured as if I were blindfolded. That is how I missed it. Vowen's handwriting is very distinctive, and as I scoured for it, um, for any further clue, I quite ignored the drawings which decorate the margins of several pages near the end of the tome. I saw no meaning in these pictures, for I thought they were embellishment, and yet hidden among these illustrations I finally recognized further dwarf runes. I did not see them during my previous studies because they were not written in Vowen's hand. Someone else wrote these runes, hiding them in plain sight. I have now translated them and can tell properly probably tell you the end of Vowen's tale. Are you ready to study finish our study of the Black Book of Mordor and close it for good? So we thought it was the end last time, but it's the end this time. Okay. So this is our last instance of the epilogue. What secrets did she add to the halls of memory? I wonder. So is it his wife? Was that it? Yeah, who would be my husband? I am named Bozena. I am one of the Zaruka. I met Vowen, who would be my husband when I was young, and my beard was but a shadow of what it is today. I did not count him much as a dwarf. It was only with the passage of years that he earned my love, and now we have a son. Tazko is his name, and I have already filled his ears with the stories of his father's adventures, but he is young, and to him tales are just tales. Ask an old dwarf the tales of her youth, and she may not remember them. So I do not entrust this story to Tazko, though he is dearest to me in this world. I will raise him to be all as Elroka should be. That was Vern's wish, that I would record the end of his tale in the tome he brought out of Mordor, and this I do now. Yeah, 2051. Yeah, 
because he, he went up to Minas Ithil and uh, purposefully worked there to, uh, yeah, in that company he made past the bounds of Mordor. And he wanted to, like, build up his, uh, him in the ranks. So he wants to head through. Yeah, if I get my walls looking like this, I'll be pretty happy about that, to be fair. So are we going this way or down? Down, okay. For 12 years he remained in Mordor, and he returned he was not the same. The time he spent among such wickedness of the Black Land of the Citadel, Minas Mordor took his a toll upon him. No one could have survived such an experience unchanged, but by my beard I say none could have done it better than my Thoin. Right, so yeah, we've been to all these before. It's the same pathway we went through last time. So yeah, this is where we ended off. He spent years in Minas Morgul trying to free his friend from a cruel fate. But it is not to be the torments of the Witch King proved too severe, and in the time Erna's resistances fell, as he knew they would. He had told Vowen the day uh, this day would come, but my husband refused to believe it. Alas, the depths of evil in that place overmastered... Vowen's hopeful heart and the words of his friend proved true. The day Vowen feared came at last. They got rid of the sword though, didn't they? The Witch King's domination was complete. Aeno was given a new raiment and a new name, Mordorith. After years of torment, he remembered neither his friends nor their adventures. Just come in one day and Ian is wearing that. Bowen was but one wicked dwarf amongst many who served in Minas Morgul. Yeah, so he just suddenly stopped remembering, basically. He tried to remind Ian of his old life, but he was, uh, but it was to no avail. Use that name in my presence, and I will have you slain. Damn! Yeah, and he's like, okay, I got it. And then he's like, I'm out of here. Tell my master I will join him presently at a bar near Nerneth. The mistress of lamentation has a task for me. Yeah, that's gotta suck. You've been trying to help this guy for so long and suddenly he's just like... Doesn't exist almost. Though I knew the time to come, he ascended the stairs of the tower and he came to the very highest chamber where resided the great beacon. He broke a shard of its reflective surface and using the secret arts of our kinds, he trapped a ray of the moon's light in that glass. Sitting in that high place, my husband took from his satchel an empty tome he had taken from the archive in the city and a cursed sage that had governed it never knew the book to be missing. In the light of the moon, Fowen wrote the tale of his years and left nothing out. He wrote of the Magaldir, the elf, uh, into whose life my husband came only near the end, and wept had he not uh, to not have known him longer. He wrote, of the, he wrote of the Knights of Gondor, with whom he adventures in Gundabad, and elsewhere, hopefully, um, Silmatar, Courageous, Kalatur, Swift, Masilnis, and Loyal Oralang, whose deaths grieved him for all the rest of his days, but most of it he wrote of Aena, the lost king of Gondor, and his dearest friend. It would only be second, it would be the only record of the man Aena had been before he fell into the net of the Witch King. Witch King? Witch King. <laughs> uh, when Bowen could find no more words to write, he found a plain old coffer in the city and fashioned two keys to open it. One of the keys he kept, the other he sat beneath hammer and broke the end. And that's the one Mordorith ended up having, having, I guess. And just being like, yeah, this is a, a cool key. Maybe it's, yeah, so maybe it's like, he gave him the key, if he opens the tome, like, ends up doing it, he's gonna, like, find his story, almost, and hopefully try and bring him back. He presents that broken key to a Rafu who wants to be his friend, yeah, to maybe try and get his memory back, sort of thing, break the spell, kind of, situation. Maybe?
I can't remember exactly when we killed him as Mordorith. Like, how would that key... I get, like, he's given a new body. Did he get the key as well? Hmm. The test of your now school mass is no concern of mine. Yeah, it's like, you got to work it out, man. The main left man is Morgul then, walking as if he were its master and could not be harmed. It's like, yeah, I've done what. Yeah, if he, like, thinks that Mordorif... Like, he's like, ah, oh, my master said to this and I can go. Or your master said this. Are we going back through here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I guess if he's literally just like, hey, my master said, or your master told me, give you this key, then go. Nobody's going to question that, are they? He did not stay in Mordor after 12 years. My husband returned to me. Even among, even hidden among the margin illustration of the Black Book, the tome of Bohenna, Bozhenna's writing is as clear as the crystal surface of a mountain lake. I had some questions, she writes. Like, what happened? <laughs> I always feel like if he came back, you wouldn't want to talk about it. Maybe read the book, fair enough, but then... Yeah. Our home in Yarnfast needed some repair, though, and wished to construct something else. Yeah, cause you want... Obviously, there's that book. And it makes sense, that's why the book is of Mordor. Look. Just because he found it there while he was sort of stuck. Though he wanted to build a secret chamber in which to hide the book he had written. So this is, uh, Tezco, yeah. Could make it a little bit less creepy. The chamber took many years to finish. It was his life work, and into its construction he pushed every part of himself. On the wall he carved the song of Tharaf Gathor, for it was the dream he set aside for the love of his friends and the family, uh, friends, and the memory of their struggles, but it still captured his imagination. Afterward, I would enter the hidden chamber unnoticed and find him staring at the song, humming it to himself. More than once, I would interrupt his mus musings to hear him speaking softly of the dim light. One day... He would say from time to time, one day. Our son Tusco was born in the years following his father's return from Mordor. He delighted to play in the room, in room, but eventually Vernon grew cross and forbade his son from entering. He is disrespectful, Tusco. He ch chided the boy. This room is a crypt. It is a tomb for the dwarf I was and for my friends who have died and worse than died. Yeah, it would be a bit weird if he's just like dancing in the... What could be worse than death? Tusco asked him once. And that was the end of the discussion. Vernon would no longer speak openly of the hidden chamber of the tome within. In time, my husband fell on the onset of his years and knew his end approach. There was one last journey for us to make, and there he would be satisfied that his life had been lived. The three of us journeyed westwards to the Grey Mountains. There they are. So we're in Arid Mithrin right now. Right here. I wonder if we travelled that far out, if we'd find the Stable Master. Anyway. It's been a long journey. I have a few steps... A uh, few steps more to take. I trust you both know you have all my love. Good, good. Keep the deeds of the Zelrog close to your heart, Tasco, and live by their example. You'll be a strong dwarf and brave, stronger and braver than I have been, I expect. I'm proud of you, my son. Take care of your mother and see that she wants for nothing. Bosena, you are more dear to me than you know, and these years have been better than I deserve. Take care of Tasco and know I will bear the memories of our time together wherever these steps take me. Then he was gone. 
We returned to Yarnfast. My husband was right. Tasco grew to be a fine, strong dwarf. In the years past, he proved to be able to help his mother and the rulers of the Iron Hills. He spoke often of the great deeds of the Zaruka, past and present. But I would have been very proud of his son. I placed the tome my husband had written in the chamber and sealed the door. I entered that secret room less and less often as the years went on. And in time, I stopped going inside at all. Tasco does not remember the journey we took to the Grey Mountains with his father. But every now and then, he asks what I think happened to him. He found the lost city of Tharafgathor, I tell him, and he smiles. Why should he not? Vowin survived Mordor and Minas Morgul and defies the edicts of the Witch King himself. I think if anyone could find that lost city, it would be my husband. Now I feel a passing in the years, as Vowin did, and I know my time is nearly ended. I've come to the Hidden Chamber one last time, and I will write the conclusion to my husband's story in the manner he wanted. My friends defied evil, he said to me, and I do not want them forgotten. I promise to conclude the tale. And now that I have done so, I will set this book down upon its table and sing the song my husband carved upon the walls. I will leave the hidden chamber and seal the door, and then I will think I will sit for a time and think of Vowin. If any should find this book after a year or two or ten, know that Vowin and Bohuzena and their son Tesco were happy with their lot, and despite the difficulties of their time, they knew that even a hopeless night must come to an end, and that there would always be a good-hearted folk ready and eager to greet the dawn. I'm actually trying to think, how do we end up finding the door? I can't quite remember, but nonetheless, we eventually did. Quite a long time after as well. Not quite 10 years, I think. All right, that's that done. Let us return to, uh, I guess, Rivendell for our final quest. I am pleased to know the end of the tale. Now, with the departure of Isildur, our business in Rivendell is concluded. Aragorn will have us need of us in Gondor, for evil still lurks within Minas Morgul. Reminded of Isildur's last request, you tell that Gandalf that the son of Elendil repented his words concerning Aena and hoped his body might have been recovered from Barad Curran. Uh, Gandalf mirthily raises an eyebrow. It's already been done. Uh, Aragorn, is to say, to King Elsar, commanded that Aena's body be recovered from Minas Morgul before I began the journey north to Rivendell. Uh, actually, it was quite simple. Aena was king of Gondor, he said to me. He should return to the land he loved, and that loved him. I saw wisdom in it. I did not gainsay his word. Within the hour, guards of the citadel were dispatched to Eric Curran to carry out the king's command. They found the watching stones outside the tower abandoned and passed without objection. Aena's body was born from the city and returned to Minas Tirith. He was laid to rest in a tomb of his father's on the silent street, and at last he knew freedom of the shadows of Mordor and the long reach of Angmar. Uh, well, I think the story is enough for one journey. I thank you once again for your company on this long road. We did just teleport everywhere, but fair enough. Um, I shall seek for you when I next have cause. Until then, farewell. You should know. Should you have need of me then, look me at the lodge of a good friend, Grimbjorn, whose hospitality cannot be measured. Nice. So we'll get our lovely things. And supposedly there is another thing after this. Um... I think, just looked it up, apparently it's Grimbjorn's Lodge, but uh, I think with it not being a direct continuation of this, actually no, let's go. I was going to say without it being a continuation straight off of him, but it makes sense for us to just go there and uh, yeah, why not? I'll see you at Grimbjorn's Lodge. All right, Gandalf, you have... Apparently, yeah. One final epilogue quest, closing the book. Yes, oh, that's a lot. I have been expecting. Okay, we got to deliver the book to one of three people. It looks like so we'll have to choose there. I'm not sure if there's any real um, advantage one over the other. Um, just similar to what we did when we were talking about the well, Karasgar's won them anyway. But we Karasgar asked for the book at one point. We said no, so I'm probably not going to take it to him. But we'll see. I've been expecting you to go. We have unearthed every single hidden. Secret hidden within the Black Book of Mordor by Vowin and Bozena, the long distant dwarves who authored it. Only one question remains what is to be done with the book now? I see a number of possibilities. It was Kiel's Tailspinner who gave the book to our keeping, and his claim is perhaps the strongest. Vowin and Bozena were his thrice great grandparents, and if the book is to be kept by anyone still living today in Middle Earth, we might do worse than Zelruk, a relative of its authors. There's another interest to be considered. The Black Book of Mordor contains a great deal of information that we prized by scholars concerning the history of Gondor and the fate of King Aena. The book was truly deserving of a place of honour in the House of Law in Minas Tirith. The scholar Covadil would greatly accept the donation of it, and in a way, Vowen's wish for Aena's struggle to be remembered in the future might be fulfilled. 
There's one other claim to the Black Book indeed, the nobility of its claim might be doubted, but I believe it's still worth considering. I speak to the claim of Karasgar, the Weeping Warrior, who asked you to steal the book and deliver it to him. Yes, I knew of your encounter with him at the Old Ford. I chose not to say anything, but I am pleased my trust in you was not misplaced, and we were able to decipher the last of the book's mysteries. Why then must we... Might we entertain Karasgar's request? Why, it's for that very reason we do not know... Uh, we know what the book says, and he does not. He believes it contains a secret to preventing his decline or securing his power, but it is not. It does contain a great deal of confusion and mystery for one who does not know how to read it, and that is to say nothing of the trick of the shard of the beacon glass. What might he give in exchange for a book he thinks will be of use to him, but it is not and cannot be? Uh, it may be an academic question, but those are always great interest me. So I leave this position of the Black Book of Mordor to you, my friend, Choose who should have it, and deliver it either to Kiel Tailspinner in Jarnfast, Coverdell in the House of Law in Minas Tirith, or Karasgar in the Old Ford. I leave the decision up to you, and with this choice, we'll close the Black Book of Mordor for good. Thank you again. So, no matter what, we still get Legendary Item Experience and the Master of the Book title, which is actually pretty cool. Now, I'm having a quick look. Um, right. So, basically... We can either give it to these two and it's fine. We can give it to him and we have to do a bunch of answers. Um, I think, from a purely, like, straight-off point of view, I wouldn't give it to Karasgar anyway. I don't want to, like, yeah, it's messing with him, but eventually it's just going to bite us uh, back. Because he's going to be like, well, this is useless. You know it was useless. Uh, die. And he's strong. Kill Tailspinner. Just wanted money. I don't feel like he'd care about the book too much. I feel like Coverdell... Because it's like he says here, Bowen's wish that inner struggle to be remembered in the future will truly be fulfilled. I feel like that's the perfect thing. So I think we're going to go to the House of Law and do that. Also, it's a little bit quicker to get that than it is to uh, Yarnfast, I guess. But um, Technically, this is the closest. If you want a hunter, or if I want a hunter, I'd probably go for that because it's closest. Because I think it's just outside the, uh, the area here. But either way, let's go to... Oh, I don't actually have it, do I? After Battle of Skullyev, back to Minas Tirith, then Houses of Law. Probably the best way to go, methinks. Right, luckily for us, there is a uh, Stable Master that goes straight to the first cycle, or a, a horse that goes straight here. Um, obviously, we're after Battle uh, Minas Tirith, so there's not an individual Stable Master for each one. But yeah, I think, again, it just makes more sense. Uh, obviously, Kiel probably would just like leave the book, and it probably wouldn't get used. Karasgar... It's just, I don't think, worth just trying to annoy him, basically. That, that's basically what it, uh, you know, ends up being. It's just you trying to annoy him by giving him a useless book that he thinks is going to be his, you know, thing that's going to cause him to have a lot of power. Um, but I feel like having it here, they can sort of translate it, document it, and stuff. Talk to Gandalf as well if we need to. Um, and just, yeah. Make it so everybody in Minas Tirith and Gondor knows uh, what happened with Aena. So, we do need to find out where they are. Um, I remember this was the hardest bit when I came in here the first time. He's trying to find the right people. I think we had to find three different sets of people. And I don't think there was a quest ring on any of them. Oh, I don't know what this lag is. It's like, not, it is lag, but it's like weird frame drops. Like it's running at 200 and then it drops to like 50 for a second. So hopefully it's not too jarring for you. I apologize if it is. We should only be here for a moment. I don't know if it's just the doors opening or what, but. Hey, Coverdell. I forgot you were here, <laughs> just generally. Hello there, my friend of the King's Wall I gave you. Yes, she did give us King's Wall. Um, cure your headaches. I have some more here if you... Oh, you're not here for King's Fall. What brings you to the Houses of Law? You explain to Coverdale that you have uh, come into possession of a book that has much to say concerning the history of Gondor, and you would like it to be pl a place on the shelves among such other tomes. You hand out the glass shard and to begin to describe the account contained within the pages of the Black Book. But before you have gone very far, Coverdale interrupts with an apologetic smile. It really isn't up to me, but I can give the book to the masters. They will study it for acceptability. If they deem it merits inclusion and truly does contain knowledge of use to Gondor, they will add it to the collection. You want to allow whether any of the scholars of the House of Law can reach ancient Zelruka runes. Oh, I doubt it. 
I think I will just add it to the shells myself. If you say this contains important historical knowledge, I believe you, none today can say what might be important to know for tomorrow. If we preserve this tome for future scholars to mull over. Well, I say we preserve this tome. Uh, Coverdell takes the black book from you and carefully tucks the glass shard inside the cover. I look forward to reading it. I've been trying to decide which language I should set my sights upon. And it seems I've received my course. The ruins of the ancient Selruka. Thank you once again. The book, black book will remain here in the House of Law, awaiting to enrich the knowledge of future interested scholars. And I'm glad to play a part in it. I got a little bit worried when she said I doubt it, but she's going to sneak it on and uh, make sure she reads it at the very least, which is just at least one person that can then uh, educate the others. Also, there is totally just a skeleton just, just there, because why not? Anyway. And so the ends the Black Book of Mordor, Gandalf murmurs with satisfaction. So, yeah, I don't really know what's going on here. He's, his sword's kind of going through his leg. Anyway, uh, I guess she's just looking at it. But we have a lot more experience. Uh, so we gained, what, 1.5 million? No, 1 point, I was probably say 1.35 million. Maybe four. Anyway. Which is good. We also got the title, which is nice. I think we are still champion of Eriador. We are. Um, but I, I quite like that title. It's good. We referred to that quite a lot during the first, like, well, main epic books is the champion of Eriador. Um, anyway, that's now done. I need to find out what our next thing is. I should probably look that up. I don't know where we go next, because I think Gandalf's done with us. Might check that. But, um, yeah, we're done with this whole black book stuff so whatever comes after that but that's going to be it for now thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next episode bye bye <laughs>